his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Yeah! 
saints. Truly glad to be here on this morning with you. Once again, I thank God for waking me up this morning, keeping me in my right mind, and giving me the activities of our am. I thank him for another day that we have never seen before, and in which I will be glad in it. And I hope to find everyone out there uh, doing well on this morning, are living with family and friends. Hope everything is going well with you. I mean, we have had some uh, ups and up and down weathers, and I hope that everyone is staying safe and wearing your mask and washing your hands like the government asks us to. We, we try to beat this pandemic, amen? And I know we can do it because God has control of everything, amen. As we continue on this morning, we're gonna go right into the message, and then after the message, we will have communion, amen? Amen, but first I would like to start out with a word of prayer, and if you would pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this hour that you allowed us to come together. Oh God, we thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you for the air that we breathe. Oh God, we thank you for everything that you have bestowed upon us. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to continue to bless us, bless living word and bless the families, God. In the name of Jesus, that one day we will return to your house, God, and give you the praise and give you the honor and the glory that is due to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If, if you have your Bible with you, I would like to ask you to turn with me to a very familiar passage of Scripture. And the Scripture is found in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it reads as thus. I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. This scripture t is talking to us about our mind because we, we people you find people think a lot of strange things like what in the world are you thinking what has gotten into you the devil has gotten into so many minds of the people and sometimes it's like that is not how that person really is something has got a hold of that person so we have to keep our minds together, keep our minds stayed on God and the goodness of God. So I would like to talk to you about tearing down the strongholds, tearing down strongholds. Strongholds are built when we accept and receive lies and begin to meditate on them. It forms in our minds what is known as an imagination. That is a false concept that we believe to be true, but in reality is not. A stronghold is an incorrect thinking pattern that has molded itself into our way of thinking. These strongholds have the compatibility to affect our feelings, how we respond to various situations in life and the play a large role in our own spiritual freedom. Strongholds are built upon deception and lies. These lies and deceptions which form strongholds can come from a wide variety of sources, including our environment, those around us, our parents, or even demon spirits. I have seen where people have picked up a demon then the demon quickly builds one or more strongholds in their minds that must be later torn down. A person who has a demon behind their strongholds may find it nearly impossible to tear them down and keep down. This is because the demon will be working hard at rebuilding and holding those strongholds in place. They will be counting that person's efforts to tear them down. It will seem as if they are hitting a brick wall and even if they seem to make progress, 
It seems like their efforts are in vain because it keeps coming back. And then, and this is the case, then the person likely has a demon which is inside them rebuilding and trying to hold that stronghold in place. That demon should be driven out in Jesus' name, then the stronghold will come down much easier and not be so quick return. Now you say strongholds, alcohol is a stronghold. Drugs is a stronghold. Lying is a stronghold. Amen. Because when you, they say when you take your first sip of that alcohol, it may not taste good the first time, but the second time, it gets a little better. That's when that stronghold is starting to build up in you. And then after a while, you, you start depending on that alcohol. You start depending on those drugs. That's a stronghold. And that has gotten into their mind, they, into their minds to where they feel that they cannot do without it. That is a lie from the devil. Since strongholds are built up on lies and falsehood, it is thought that the truth that you tear down such faulty thinking patterns. Strongholds are built when we accept and receive lies and begin to meditate on them. It forms in our minds what is known as an imagination. That is a false concept that we believe to be true, but in reality is not. The Bible speaks about these imaginations clearly and show us how they can be torn down. In 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to be obedient of Christ. The renewing of our minds and strongholds, we need, we know that strongholds and imaginations must be cast down. But how? By being transformed through the renewing of our minds. In Romans 12 and 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As our minds are renewed, we may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect, and the will of God. These things are some of the very things that strongholds rise themselves against. Many people who are caught up in shame-based thinking do not realize that it's God's will and it is good for them to disassociate themselves from their past. Their minds need to be renewed, and as those strongholds come down, they will be able to see God's will and response. And sometimes, you know, people get, get around a, a certain group that they, they can't break away from. They know what they're doing, and they know they're doing wrong. They know that their thinking is wrong, but they're trying to break away, but they can't because they have that stronghold on their minds. They keep feeding lies into that person, saying that that person don't love you, or your, your family don't care nothing about you, or you're no good, you won't be any good, and you don't have any friends, and, and you know, we are your friends, and we are your family, we got your back, we will take care of you. And all those are lies that will keep, keep that person in bondage. And it's, going to, and it's hard for that person to break away from that mindset, from being held down by that way of thinking. So it's going to take a strong mind to tear out, tear down that stronghold. How is that people are so easily convinced of a lie but when a truth is spoken they can't believe it and you know they, there's a saying that some people will believe a lie rather than they would the truth 
that's a stronghold of the mind to where the devil has really at their mind and they really need prayer to break that stronghold over them. How are, how are our minds cleansed? Our minds are cleansed through the washing of the word. Our minds are transformed and strongholds are torn down. Spending time and meditating on the word of God washes our minds and corrects our false thinking patterns. Amen. So we have to remember that in order to, stick, to tear down those strongholds of the way we think or the, the lies, we need to get into the word of God, study his word, and let God speak to us and try to learn from what he is saying to us. Now, it may not say the same thing to you as he says to me, but you know, there's a way that God can uh, talk to us that we can all be on the same page and think alike. Now, our strongholds are different. Everybody has a stronghold, whether you believe it or not. Everyone has a stronghold. It may be a strong stronghold or it might be something small, but a stronghold is a stronghold. So, the way to take care of that is to renew our minds. Be around positive people. Be around positive thinking. Be positive. Pray. Pray. And more prayer. Get around person, get around people that are doing something for the doing something for God, trying to live for God. And and, and, and try to understand what a person is trying to do to help break down those strongholds. I thank God that he has really did, done some things for me and, and you know, he's, he's still working on me. I, I mean, you know, none of us are perfect. We all have a little something that we deal with and we go through, but you know, we just have to keep praying that God will take care of those things and and keep our minds clear and, and understand what he is saying to us. Amen. So I hope that you have received something out of this message on today. And so at this time, we would like to offer Christ to you this morning. Behold, now is the, the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In Romans 10 and 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For those of you that have the desire to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, just repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I repent. I'm turning away from sin. I believe that you are God's son and that God raised you from the dead. I received you as Lord and Savior into my life. Thank you, God, for saving me in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you prayed, if you prayed and believed that prayer, you are now a child of God. So begin studying the word of God and start attending a Bible-believing church. I know it's hard at this time. There are still some churches that are still uh, out, but you know, get in touch with someone at the church, with the pastor or the associate pastors or the deacons or somebody at that church. And let, and let them know that you did or you have accepted Christ in your life. Amen. Amen. Now, as we prepare to do our communion on this morning, amen, I hope that everyone has received a word or message from God.
broken for us, blood shed for us. Before I read the scripture, as you get prepared, I'm going to pray at this time. God, we thank you for this hour of communion, God. We thank you that you have blessed us and shown us favor, God. God, we thank you for your body, which hung on the cross. And we thank you for the blood, which is the shedding of blood for our sins. Oh God, we, we thank you. We thank you for saving us. And we are healed because it says, by your stripes, we are healed. You were bruised for our sins and our iniquities. And oh God, we thank you and we praise you. And as we take communion on this morning, God, we ask you to bless us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Amen, our scripture reads as thus in 1 Corinthians 11 and 20. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which is also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he has betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Holy, 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 Lord God, oh Oh, 
time, I'm asking you that if you have your, your cracker or your receptacle or whatever you're using today for communion that you have ready. And as we prepare to eat the body, the cracker that represents the body of Christ, we're going to pray over the bread. Gracious Father, we thank you for this time and this hour. And oh God, we ask you to bless this bread that we take and do in remembrance of you as you hung on the cross for our body and sins. Oh God, we ask you to bless us and continue to watch over us. In Jesus' name, amen. Take, eat the body of Christ. Oh God, we thank you for this fruit of the vine that represents your blood. Oh God, we ask you to cleanse us and to heal us and deliver us and keep us saved, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take the fruit, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you for being with us on this morning for our morning message and also for communion. And I would like to reiterate that God is still a good God, regardless of what's going on. He is good to us. Amen. So living word, let us stay focused and let's stay, to, stay prayerful. Keep loving one another. Keep checking on one another because we will be back in real soon. We will we'll, we will be back real soon. So right now, God, we're just going to say that saints, go with God. Be blessed and be a blessing and receive new healing in 2021. God bless you. I know it was blood. I know it was blood. I know it was blood for me One day when I was lost He died on the cross I know it was blood for me The blood came streaming down The blood came streaming down The blood came streaming down for me One day when I was lost he died on the cross I know it was the blood for me I know it was the blood I know it was the blood I know it was the blood for me One day when I was lost He died on the cross I know it was the blood for me Praise Him. Glory to God.